Hi there. In the previous videos, we've been talking about loss functions. And in particular, we talked about how if a loss function changes, you might almost get a new algorithm. In particular, we started talking about how you can also adapt loss functions to really focus in on the data and have the data really influence the loss function. And we had a look at using class weights to accomplish this. In this video, we're gonna dive even deeper by granting ourselves even more manual freedom, so to say. And to help me maybe explain how to get there, I've made another data drawing. What you're looking at here is something I drew just freehand, and you can kind of look at this as a regression task. I have something on the x-axis over here, and I'm going to be pretending that we're interested in predicting this y value. So you can imagine that we are interested in having some sort of a model that is able to interpolate all of these points pretty neatly. That's going to be the goal here. So this drawn data set has been fetched, and we can see here that I've also got the same data set available inside of matplotlib over here. One subtle thing to observe right off the bat is that there's just a little bit more density at the lower regions over here. You can kind of see that there's just a little bit more points here than there are over here. The, the density is just a little bit different. It's a subtle thing, but we'll see in a bit why that might matter. Now, in terms of a model, you can imagine that there are definitely a few ways of maybe modeling this. But just for a demo, what I figured I might do is use the spline transformer. The spline transformer is able to get me a smooth shape. That is sort of the featureization that it can do on my behalf. And then I'm hopefully going to be able to follow that up with a linear model that will fit this curve kind of nicely. So when I scroll down below over here, you can see the model definition. I have a somewhat basic pipeline. There's just two components in it. I've got my spline transformer over here and I have a ridge regression that follows. So first I'm going to be generating these smooth hills and then I'm going to be uh, fitting a model on it. And when I do that, uh, we can look at the predictions and they look a little bit like this. The orange line over here is the prediction that comes out of the model and these blue dots are the original data that come in. Now it's totally fair to observe that I'm fitting and predicting on the train set. So we should take what we see here with just a little bit of a grain of salt but there is one observation that I do wanna maybe focus in on, and that is the fact that it does seem that the data points that we have over here just have a slightly better fit as far as interpolation goes. Same over here, compared to the stuff that we've got over here. And when you consider that this region also has a bit more data density, so to say, it might not be the biggest surprise. There are more data points over here, so that's also where we're gonna put some more focus. But what if we are dealing with a business case where we actually care more about predicting the higher values? Maybe this is a price prediction system, and it could be the case that we really care more about predicting these high value cases a bit more. Then hopefully, even though this is a somewhat theoretical example, you can imagine that one way to get there is to have some sort of system in our pipeline that allows us to just assign a little bit more weight to the data points that have a higher value. We still wanna account for these points down here, certainly, but the thinking is that maybe if we can assign a weight that's a bit higher to these points over here, that we then also get a better performance on the region that we are interested in. There is actually a fairly general technique to get here, and if you've seen the previous video, you might already be able to guess how we're gonna get there. But what I would like to do now is just give a little bit of a theoretical introduction in how on an algorithmic note, you can assign a little bit more weight to these data points. So, from an algorithmic perspective, once again, I'm assuming scikit-learn, so we've got our data set X over here with lots of values that we wanna have some patterns being detected in such that we can predict this array of values Y. We have the first row of data, the second row, the third, etc., and there's all sorts of information here. In this particular case, I'm going to assume a regression task, though the argument can also be held for a classification one. But the way that these algorithms typically learn is they look at the imbalance between what we predict and what we would like to have. We call that a, a loss, so to say. And you could say, well, the loss for data point one that depends on the predicted value for Y, which I'm going to denote with a little hat over here, compared to the actual value of y. The notation here is not super important. The main thing that's important is that we have some sort of a loss value that's going to measure how well our prediction is. And we're going to do that for every single data point. 
And the way that the machine learning algorithm would uh, find the best model, so to say, is it would look at all of these separate losses. It would take the sum of all of them. And typically there are some sort of weights that one would optimize for. So that could be the weights in a linear regression, but you can also imagine many trees in an ensemble model. The main point of all of these losses is that we have some sort of way to measure what is better or worse in an algorithm. In this particular case though, nothing is stopping us from adding a manual weight to all of these losses. We can have some sort of weight that we allocate to data point one, some sort of weight we allocate to data point two, and some sort of weight to data point three, etc. The only thing that would really change then is inside of our sum, we would have to account for all of these separate weights. But given that we have an algorithm that can optimize whatever loss function that we can come up with, that also means that the algorithm can deal with whatever weight we attach. And that really gives us a lot of freedom. In this particular case, we can come up with some sort of a weight that keeps in mind the value that we have in our uh, Y labels over here. To put it very bluntly, one thing we could just do is we could say, well, if we see a very high value, let's just literally copy that. So, so weight one over here could be 120, and weight two over here could be 50, and weight three over here could be 60. That's perfectly mimicking the Y values that we've got over here. By doing this, it's hopefully clear that data points that are just very big are going to have way more weight in the sum that we optimize over here than these other points that have a lower weight. As we'll see later, there are lots of different techniques you can do that really make sense for a lot of use cases. But for now, the main thing I would like to just show is that this in general just kind of works. But there are also some consequences. So with that little bit of theory, looking back at what's happening over here, the simplest way to go about getting a better fit for this region might just be to associate more weight to these data points. And scikit-learn actually has a pretty convenient way for us to do that. It's not supported by every single model out there, but a lot of models really do allow us to manually pass a weight for all of these data points that we use during training. To help give a bit of context here, what I've done is I've fetched the doc string that is attached to the ridge models fit method. And when you open it up, you'll notice that the fit method as normally would expect an X parameter and a Y parameter for the data going in and the labels to predict. But there is also this optional sample weight that you can add. And this sample weight is the thing that will allow us to give a weight to each and every single row of data to predict. The way that this sample weight works is we are going to have to pass it a array. And that array needs to be of the same length as the inputs that we have over here. But hopefully you can recognize that we do get a lot of freedom here. We are really free to pass any sample weight that we like. However, when you look at this, you might also wonder how this might work inside of a pipeline. After all, when you have a pipeline with multiple steps, and when you call dot fit on that pipeline, then typically you only pass an X and Y coordinate in here. And you might wonder, well, if this pipeline has two steps, let's say a pre-processing technique, and then a model, then it will be nice if we have some sort of way to give these sample weights, but to only have them apply to the model and not to the pre-processing technique. This is a somewhat recent feature, but scikit-learn does support this via this metadata routing feature. And I'm going to give a very quick demo of that right now. Now, there are a few ways that I can go about with my sample weights. Here's one way. You can see that I'm making a pipeline. I've got a spline transformer first. And then after that, I've got a ridge regression, just like what you see in the picture over here. What you can do is you can call fit on that pipeline, and this would really not be using the sample weight whatsoever. However, one thing you could currently do is you could pass it this extra parameter. The name of the parameter is important. The first part needs to refer to the name of a component. And when you construct a pipeline this way, it will just use the lowercase class name as a name for a component. So that's where this comes from. And then you can use this double underscore syntax to point to a keyword argument in the fit method of that rich regression. And that's how I can pass the sample weight uh, to also go in there. And in the current version of Python, this is something you can totally go ahead and do. However, 
This syntax does come with a couple of interesting consequences down the line. It's great that it works inside of a pipeline, but what about grid search? Maybe we want to have control on how to apply the sample weight to the scoring methods as well. And I'm not going to go too much in depth into all the subtle things here, but what I do want to quickly highlight is that there is this new syntax that you can use as well. This is all fairly recent, but you can also import scikit-learn and then set the configuration to enable this new feature called metadata routing. By enabling this, what you can do is you can set the so-called fit request on each component individually. So in this case, I'm saying, well, the rich regression, yeah, that is going to accept a sample weight, but the spline regression, that is not going to receive the sample weight. By specifying this, I can use sample underscore weight directly when I call pipe.fit, and there's no need to do that ridge double underscore stuff over here. This is a relatively new feature. Not every single component is supported at the time of making this recording, but it is good to emphasize that doing it this way is going to be the way of the future. There are many subtle details to explain why, but I did just want to give this small little preview. Having said that, if I train this system with these sample weights, we can inspect that the predictions are actually a little bit different. Just for good measure, this is what we had before. Notice that this peak isn't really well covered. But if I were to apply these sample weights, then the story is a bit different. Then we do see that the peak actually has a better fit. It's not exactly a free lunch though, because what you'll notice is what we gain over here, we kind of lose over here. The spline transformer is giving us lots of these hills and the regression model that follows is taking one of these hills and it's really preferring it to be on top here. And it's kind of coming at the cost of stuff that's happening below. There are things that we could do against this, by the way. We could maybe increase the number of hills in the spline transformer, and that definitely wouldn't be the worst idea. But I do want to point out that even though it is really amazing to have very manual control over the weighing of all of these data points, it usually does come at a bit of a cost. That is definitely something to keep in the back of your mind. In general, I do think that these value weights give you a lot of flexibility, but my main advice would be to consider them when you've got a very good domain-specific reason. Usually these value weights don't appear magically. Usually it's a relationship to a business case why these weights really matter. That said, these value weights do have a couple of interesting, somewhat specific use cases in somewhat specific domains, and that is something I will discuss in upcoming videos. There are value weights that we can generate that can boil down to a very direct theme that we're interested in predicting.